Hi, welcome to your astrology forecast for August 27th to September 3rd, 2014. On August 27th, Venus and Leo squares Mars and Scorpio. So this is going to bring up some tensions in relationships and perhaps you'll have to confront some darker aspects in the relationship and allow things to come to light that so that these darker aspects can be transformed. Venus and Leo is helping us to really express ourselves in our relationships easier and um, the negative side to Venus and Leo could be overly dramatic displays um, especially with the tension going on between Venus and Mars but this tension can be very uh, useful, very creative, and very transformative to your relationship. It will help to get all those things aired and allow for you to move forward in a much stronger and bolder way. And on that same day, the moon moves into Libra. So we will be very in tune with our relationships and will be a lot more diplomatic. So this will help us a lot in handling this tension. Um, Libra always wants to take the more uh, diplomatic and maybe less confrontational route. So it will help us to be a lot more peaceful about how we air these things that need to be aired, the things that need to be confronted so that transformation can occur, uh, Libra will make it a lot more easygoing and smoother and more peaceful. So that's definitely a good thing. And it should bring you in a lot more closer state after it, this occurs. On August 28th, the moon in Libra sextiles Jupiter and Leo, and they both in conjunct Neptune and Pisces, creating a yod. So with the... Uh, the moon in Libra sextiling Jupiter and Leo, this is awesome for relationships. So there's a sense of expansion and well-being within romance and room for growth and ability to really share on a deeper level and um, learn more from each other, be more um, expressive, and be more philosophical even about the relationship or just in general and be able to learn and grow more in your relationships with them both in conjunct Neptune and Pisces this really brings your intuition on board so Neptune and Pisces is really able to you're able to feel what the other person is feeling and so when you are um, having these conversations the ability to really tune into your intuition will increase so Overall, there will be a general um, connectedness and ability to express yourself and expand through your relationships at this time. And if you haven't um, had a relationship so far, you are likely to find one, especially if you're tuned into yourself in such a way where you're feeling these expansive and, and uh, intuitive energies. And that's the best way to attract love is by feeling it within yourself first. So this is just um, extremely powerful, extremely um, tuned in. And it could even be like a situation where out of the blue, um, the, you know, the love of your life shows up. You know, it's very possible. So, and if you have the love of your life, then it's a great time to be having amazing um, conversations about philosophical and spiritual ideas and writing some of that down would be a good idea or like creating something out of it would be awesome as well or even if you know you don't find love or you aren't in love then creating something extremely expansive and spiritual or intuitive or from your artistic side would be an awesome idea as well Okay, then the moon in Libra poses Uranus and Aries as they both come into close conjunction with, um, of course, uh, moon in Libra would conjunct the north node in Libra and Uranus and Aries would conjunct the south node in Aries. 
Um, so <clears throat> it's not exact. It's actually like four degrees away, but the moon will be opposing Uranus. And I feel like the, you know, it will be relevant. Uh, Uranus will help us to really tune into what we need to let go of within ourselves. And there may be some major insights into yourself where you realize these things that you really just need to let go of about yourself. Um, behaviors more so, um, or egotistical tendencies. And it's not necessarily even your true self. It's just a former version of who you once were that you might need to let go of. With the moon conjunct the north node, this helps you um, <clears throat> get in touch with your feelings. And following your feelings is the best way to go about where you want to go next. And with it being in Libra, it's likely that partnering up with someone else may be uh, an option for you is a next step forward in your evolution, um, whether it's a relationship or um, even just a partnership, like a business partnership. It's a really um, great time to be in partnership with people uh, for the purposes of growth. So yes, following your feelings and perhaps doing that. Okay, and in the meantime, Venus and Leo is also involved here, trining the south node in Aries and sextiling the north node in Libra. Now, this is really helping us to have uh, more love for ourselves. We can tune into those places maybe that we don't always like about ourselves and start to look at them from a new perspective and be more loving towards ourselves and perhaps forgiving ourselves. And... Really, it's an awesome time to find a relationship or to um, be, you know, you'll feel a lot more uh, grateful for your relationships at this time. And you'll probably have a lot more fun in your relationships as well. So it's just going to be a great time to grow when you're uh, in relationship with someone and grow within yourself, even if you haven't found a relationship yet. Okay, on August 29th, the Sun in Virgo opposes Neptune in Pisces. So the Sun in Virgo is helping us to really uh, ground in on what we need to get done, what, we, what our next steps forward are in our daily responsibilities that can lead to uh, results later on. So the thing is that it could be causing a bit of self-doubt to a degree. Perhaps we're not where we think we should be. And of course, Virgo is a bit self-critical at times. So with uh, it opposing Neptune and Pisces, Neptune in Pisces has been like our idealistic visions and our dreams and, um, you know, can be um, illusions even. So, so the sun in Virgo is kind of maybe um, just pinpointing some of the areas that have not been realistic and it could cause a little bit of the self-doubt but as long as you start moving forward in a way that actually makes sense and maybe start moving forward on the small steps right now then it will start to look more real the idealistic vision that you've had previously all right on august 30th the moon moves into Scorpio. So this helps us to really tune into our deepest feelings and emotions, our subconscious feelings and um, things that we haven't been aware of may come up for us. And it's a very transformative and deeper day. You might want to go within yourself a little more and meditate more or even um, go to a healer of sorts. A uh, transformative healer would be a good idea, or a psychologist or something of that nature um, could really help you to release old and unconscious emotions that you haven't dealt with. So it's always a good idea during times of Scorpio to do that. All right, on August 31st, the moon conjuncts Saturn and Mars and Scorpio. So all these planets are like hanging out. This is going to be bringing up our feelings about um, perhaps some of the weight of responsibility that has been uh, on upon us, especially in the house where Scorpio rules your chart. Um, and 
we can actually really get some stuff done on this day. Mars is really helping us to get these things done. It's a release of energy. Um, exercise is a really good idea and just taking care of the stuff that has been weighing on you is the best way to really deal with this. And that can help you to deal with your emotions better and um, transformation can occur when you're exercising and when you're taking care of these things. And um, long-term transformation is also in there. So wherever um, Scorpio is in your chart, then that's where your long-term growth is occurring. What Saturn seems to do though is like adds a lot of weight at first, it gets a lot of responsibility and um, but it also is like helping you to become more focused in that area and help you concentrate and um, become more mature as well. So if you know where Scorpio is in your chart then that should hopefully be more helpful. <laughs> All right. Pluto in Capricorn, sextiles Neptune in Pisces, and they both in conjunct Jupiter and Leo, creating a yod. Um, and this is also on August 31st. So with Neptune and Pluto sextiling, this is bringing some major insights, major in-depth, unconscious revealings, things like beyond the veil kind of stuff, like really intuitive and deep stuff is coming up for us where we are just, you know, shattering illusions and getting in touch with our deepest selves and the deepest parts of the universe. Um, with them both in conjunct Jupiter and Leo, this is like expanding our minds, expanding our ability to create, and even um, helping our children expand, perhaps. So this is like, like some major stuff is being unearthed at the same time as just being felt everywhere. And it's like kind of going to be on a grander scale here. And um, it's just like some serious uh, learning is going to occur. Some serious expansion and growth from this. And ability to even express this expansion or these under new understandings that you are having. These um, perhaps new feelings and um, new sensings, intuitive insights, whatever it is. And really, you can create something that is extremely transformative for the whole collective at this time. Or you can even uh, just make sure to like write this stuff down or express it or do what you can to like try to um, capture some of the stuff that's really coming up in a more creative way. <laughs> All right. On September 1st, the moon moves into Sagittarius. So this is helping us to tune into our beliefs and tune into um, perhaps some of the beliefs we have about ourselves and about where we are wanting to expand next, where we're wanting to, what what's the next horizon that we're wanting to reach? What's the next frontier that we're wanting to get to? And um, what's the next adventure? The sun in Virgo opposes Neptune in Pisces, and they both square the moon in Sagittarius, creating a T-square. Now, this is, of course, bringing up that opposition where um, Neptune in Pisces has given us these idealistic dreams and visions, and the sun in Virgo is like, all right, well, how do we make this right? Like real? How do we make this real? What steps can we take? What's the details? You know, um, what about this? You know, what about this flaw and this idea? And then the moon in Sagittarius is like, all right, we just gotta, you know, believe in ourselves. We gotta move forward with these ideas and just like start, you know, veering forth and expanding and growing and just. But there is a tension there. There's like this, uh, you know, need to like move forward, but there's like a little bit of hold back because of maybe perfectionistic tendencies or maybe procrastination even. So 
Um, it is good though, because it's helping to refine these things. That Sun and Virgo is helping us to refine what needs to be, um, you know, put into realis realistic terms or realistic um, steps. Okay, and also on September 1st, Mercury moves into Libra. Now, this is hitting anything in a much more diplomatic way. We will be able to um, communicate in a lot more harmonious ways, and our conversations should be very um, two-sided. We can be both good talkers and good listeners, and you can also understand the other person's point of view a lot easier during this time, and be able to think about other people and be more considerate of other people when you're in conversations especially. So a lot more productive conversations can occur during Libra. Um, there may be a tendency to avoid certain topics and uh, to avoid confrontation. And um, it could also be that you're having more conversations about your relationship or more talk about marriage or more talk about love and more talk about peace and harmony and uh, idealistic ideas about those sorts of things. And even talk about music, uh, writing lyrics, writing poems, writing songs would all be a good idea at this time. On September 3rd, the Sun in Virgo trines Pluto and Capricorn. And this is really helping us to understand, you know, what needs to change in our work and what needs to change in our career. And it can help us to dig deeper into um, maybe what's been missing, what's been um, perhaps just not working, and you can really change that and be able to uh, make some major progress forward and a lot of shedding light on what can be done. And um, thinking in that way of what can be done is a really good idea for this, all of this time here. <laughs> all right, and on the same day, September 3rd, the moon enters Capricorn. So there will be, um, uh, you know, more focus, more seriousness on this day. You can get more done on this day. Um, a lot more focus on work, and you'll feel good about your work, and you'll feel better if you are working hard on that day. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe and comment and share. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have an awesome week.